Jeremy Grant has become one of the greatest two-way players in the entire NBA. After the Detroit Pistons got mocked for signing him to a three-year, $60 million contract, he went into the Pistons season with the mindset of wanting to be a number one option in a future All-Star. He did not disappoint. With averages of 22 points, five rebounds, three assists, and playing some amazing defense all around, Jeremy Grant was so close to the most improved player in the league. Now, with that being said, there are people questioning if the Pistons should, you know, sell the stock of Jeremy Grant while it's at its all-time high, or they should keep him as he could be a crucial part of the rebuild and the veteran player going forward. Forward. For today's video, we are going to discuss one of the trades that have been tossed around and really see why it makes sense for both sides. Let's get going on today's video. Yo, what's going on guys? Crispy Flakes here. So really since like the end of the regular season, I've been seeing a lot of other NBA teams and their fans uh, propose trades for Jeremy Grant of the Detroit Pistons. Now, typically I kind of shrug these off because a lot of time it's like Luke Cornett and like a seventh round draft pick in exchange for Jeremy Grant. So I just kind of like ignore that. But there has been one in the media as of late, man. You know, one that I saw it at first, and I was like, okay, like, I probably shouldn't think too much of this. But it keeps on popping up all over the place, guys. And that is a trade with Jeremy Grant and the Memphis Grizzlies. And to be quite honest, I really don't dislike it, man. It's actually a pretty damn good trade. And I feel like, you know, as NBA fans out there, you got to be able to say when a good trade proposal is a good trade proposal. If you always say, like, that's not enough or whatever, um, then you're going to come off as a delusional fan. I definitely don't want to come off as a delusional fan when it comes to my favorite basketball team. So before we get going on the trade and talk about that and talk about the Memphis Grizzlies and the Pistons, if you guys don't mind leaving a like on this video, man, it's extremely, extremely important for that YouTube algorithm, as you guys all know. Um, yeah, man, it's, it's really essentially the only way I can grow this channel is with the help of you guys man hit that like button and of course if you are new to the channel i'm trying to get man 200 brand new subscribers today uh on the road to 300 000 subscribers that is such a large number it's a very big number man it's crazy to think about but uh yes uh, i appreciate every single one of you guys you know just tuning into my basketball videos every single day okay so the trade with the memphis grizzlies that was proposed that i've been seeing over and over again is the memphis grizzlies receive jeremy grant and the Pistons receive Jaron Jackson Jr., Justice Winslow, and the number 17 pick in the draft. Now, to be quite honest, man, I understand that Jeremy Grant has a, has a fantastic season. And, you know, Jaron Jackson uh, is coming off major injury, man. Like, he's coming off some injury stuff. Like, they only played, like, 11 games last season for the Grizzlies. Uh, but at the same time, I looked at that, I was like, damn, bro. Like, that is actually quite the haul to get for Jeremy Grant. But it's nice seeing, you know, the media pay some respect towards him and just realizing, like, you know what, man? Like... Tyus Jones ain't, is not going to get it done. I like Tyus Jones, but yeah, that's just not going to get it done for Jeremy Grant, right? Okay, so why exactly does this trade make sense for the Memphis Grizzlies? Let's start off with them. Uh, well, for one, you know, as we saw, said in the intro of this video, Jeremy Grant has a fantastic contract, man. Like, he signed up for like three years, $60 million. A lot of people laughed at that contract when he initially got it. Uh, people said they chose him over Christian Wood. I think there's a lot more to that story than, you know, what remains to be seen. Uh, let's keep in mind, man, Mason Plumlee's $8 million. It was not going to get Christian Wood. So, yeah, let's just think about that for a second. But no, man, uh, fantastic contract. Like, one of the best value contract for a guy that was near most improved player if it wasn't for guys like uh well julius randall just absolutely going off for the new york knicks much deserved award for julius randall by the way uh but yeah man so grant on the season you know keep in mind he did slow down a little bit towards the end of the season just uh i think he was dealing with some injury stuff like and stuff like that man obviously the pistons were uh, low key maybe high key trying to tank a little bit but uh end of the season with 22 points five rebounds three assists one block per game and it's you know beyond the block shot or whatever just uh, one of the better defensive players in the entire nba so uh right away that that gives them that veteran player on the team but also due to the pretty cheap contract it allows them to maybe expand and get some other guys via free agency uh keep in mind jaron jackson is due to be paid pretty dang soon here so i'm gonna guess he's gonna warrant a pretty large contract a lot of people are gonna want jaron jackson um but yeah man uh, not, not, beyond that beyond just looking at jaron they also have Jonas valachunas and kyle anderson uh both those guys you know anderson can play the three or the four spot Jonas is definitely a center so uh, in my opinion jaron jackson I would say in the ideal situation, he's probably a center, but him at power forward is also fine. But uh, when it comes down to it, like, Valachunas has been absolutely fantastic. For a while now, I've been kind of saying, you know, like, let's uh, trade Valachunas while his stock's really high. But I'm also, in, in, at the same time, he's, he's 28, uh, he's averaging like 17 points, 13 rebounds per game. Like, the dude's been an absolute beast. So I could see where 
uh, you know, obviously we're Memphis Grizzlies fans who want to keep him on the squad, right? So, yeah, then Kyle Anderson, obviously, is just one of those jack-of-all-trades type of players. Uh, but also, at the same time, man, the Memphis Grizzlies, they do need some more veterans. So, by training away Jaron Jackson Jr., uh, who is only 21, you do get the 26-year-old Jeremy Grant, who uh, just is a great basketball player, man. So, that gives him the veteran. And uh, with the freed-up salary cap, you can go for some other names out there, right? So, looking uh, after all this, assuming this trade were to go down, you are looking at a lineup. In my opinion, this is a lineup that I personally like. Ja Morant, Desmond Bain. I like the idea of Desmond Bain starting at the two. Uh, Dylan Brooks at the three, who could break out into an all-star next season. Jeremy Grant at the four, and Jonas Valachunas at the five. That front court, absolutely beastly. Now, obviously, if you want to go you know, with Bain off the bench uh, still, you, want, you can go with Ja Morant, Brooks at the two. Uh, Jeremy Grant at the three, actually spent most of the season at the small forward spot. Then you can have... Uh, Kyle Anderson at the four, Jonas Valchunas at the five. Also not a bad little route to go, but I think I like that first lineup the best. And, uh, okay, so why exactly does this make sense for the Detroit Pistons? Why would you trade away this great valued contract for this player that you took a chance on and uh, you saw him for a few more seasons actually wants to play in Detroit, which is actually a very important aspect. You want guys that actually want to be in Detroit because obviously we don't get a lot of free agents and stuff. Um, and Jaron Jackson Jr. actually went to Michigan State, so I feel like he would have no issues wanting to play for the Detroit Pistons, right? But uh, plain and simple, like, Jaron Jackson just kind of fits that rebuild a bit better, right? I mean, in the end of the day, you want your veteran players, but the Pistons are in a circumstance where they, where they are building via the draft. And, uh, yeah, guys like Cade and all of them out there, man, Killian Hayes, Sadiq, Isaiah Stewart, they're all very young. So, uh, Jaron Jackson's only 21. I mean, he fits in perfectly with the rebuild. Uh, you can insert him into the lineup right away, and uh, he can really grow with the rest of this team, right? Uh, but also another guy, another uh, exciting aspect of the season. By the way, I guess I should mention Jaron Jackson's stats on the season. Um, he did average 14 points, 5 rebounds per game. Now, keep in mind, he only played 11 games, and that was coming back from injuries. So, not really a great indicator. Let me actually pull up his stats over here on my screen. Uh, the season before, you know, played 57 games. He averaged 17 points, 5 rebounds, 1 to 2 blocks per game, and shot about 39% from 3. So, can definitely stretch that floor out. Uh, but once again, like, really going back to his rookie season he's kind of had a lot of injury issues so it's just something to be aware of which is why i think that justice winslow and the pick are being added into this trade uh but no man straight up like I really feel like Justice Winslow would also be a pretty good fit for the Detroit Pistons, uh, just because, you know, he's somebody that's also been going through some injury issues, but uh, if you really look back to when he was on the Miami Heat, I absolutely loved him playing point guard. I just felt like that worked. I loved point guard Winslow. He did it for a very little while, and it just worked for that team, man. He was getting, like, triple doubles and stuff like that, so uh, it, it, it could be the same case as, like, Josh Jackson, what Weaver and uh, Dwayne Casey were able to do, kind of making uh, Josh Jackson a respectable NBA player. Maybe they can take Justice Winslow and under the system you know low pressure circumstance and uh, make him you know a fantastic player like he was for some time for the Miami in my opinion and then obviously you look at the number 17 pick uh Weaver is a genius in the draft as far as I've seen so far I mean early on he had Killian Hayes who obviously we don't know the verdict on him yet and two all NBA rookies and Isaiah Stewart and Sadiq Bey so he got Sadiq Bey at 19 so I can only imagine what he could do at that 17th pick now I was looking at some mock drafts and stuff like that um at the moment you know Right around that 17th pick, it's very heavy point guard wise. The mock draft that I'm looking at right now is by CBS Sports. Uh, they have Miles McBride going at that 17th spot to the Memphis Grizzlies, of course. Um, guys after that that are going to the OKC Thunder, they got Jaden Springer, Jared Butler to the Knicks, you know, so a lot of guards around that area. Not saying it's going to go in that particular order, but that's just kind of how we're reading it right now. So, yes, uh, it would be amazing to see what they were, were able to do. Maybe they trade the pick. I don't really know. A lot of different circumstances with that. Uh, so, ideally, you are looking at a lineup. I, I think this would be their best lineup. I'm not saying it will be the starting five because uh, Mason Plumlee might start at center or Isaiah Stewart, but I have Killing. Killian Hayes, Cade Cunningham, yes, we are drafting Cade, Sadiq Bay, Jaron Jackson Jr. still running that four spot, and Isaiah Stewart at the five. That team excites the hell out of me, man. I love everything about that team. Like, that team to me, I'm just like, oh my god, I cannot wait. I need to watch that squad. Uh, and if we have Jeremy Grant, that will also be cool, but um, I don't know, man. I really like Jaron Jackson Jr., so assuming he can stay healthy. I don't want a circumstance where he gets injured all the time, because that could really hold up back the Pistons rebuild. Um, but yes, so... That's why I think it kind of makes sense for both sides. I did go over to Twitter at CrispyFlakes 2 k by the way. Go follow me over there, man, so you never miss out on these videos and being a part of these videos. And uh, I did ask you guys, what are some other moves you would like to see the Memphis Grizzlies, you know, make this NBA offseason? Because obviously there's a lot of different routes this team can go. They are extremely young. They are extremely talented. You have the building block with John Morant. Uh, it's so exciting if you are a Memphis Grizzlies fan. Like, you guys have such a great squad and such a bright future going forward. Um, it's insane that you guys got to go for Mike Conley, 
you know, Zach Randolph, Marcus Saul to like this new young youth team. And you went from that beat em up style of basketball to just like this youth movement right here, man. Like, I don't know, it's just, it's gotta be really fun for you guys to do, right? Just really adapt to today's NBA game, right? Um, but okay, so one guy that responded was his uh, Twitter was trying Glasson or try Glasson, and he says that the Memphis Grizzlies should sign Demar Derozan. Which honestly, like, even if they get, uh, even if they even if they get um, Jeremy Grant, they could still go for Demar Derozan because I feel like they would have the money to do so. And that is an intriguing lineup, man. Especially if you put Demar at the power forward spot, which he actually, if you guys look at uh, Basketball Reference, that's where he played most of his minutes for the Spurs. Uh, that just works, man. Like, a lineup with John Morant, Dylan Brooks, Jeremy Grant, Demar DeRozan. You can flip those two guys around, too. Positionless basketball. And Yolo Shep at the five with Demar's near all-star numbers uh, last season and the addition of Jeremy Grant. That team, in my opinion, is making a run at the NBA Finals. I really believe that, man. Like, that team just works, in my opinion. Love the idea of them going for Demar DeRozan. You know, don't uh, blow up the bank or nothing like that, dude. It'll blow up the cap space, but uh, if you can get him on a pretty good contract, I feel like that's just a really, really solid fit. Uh, another thing we have here is from Caden Talk Sports. He said to do a trade for Ben Simmons. Now, in my opinion, I'm not a big fan of the trade. I don't think it makes sense for the 76ers, but he said uh, Jonas Valachunas, Dylan Brooks, and a 2023 first round pick for Ben Simmons. He says he thinks... Um, that Ben Simmons would fit nicely with John Morant and Jaron Jackson. I will say a front court of Jaron Jackson and also Ben Sim and Ben Simmons just makes sense. Uh, but to get Ben Simmons, it would have to be Jaron Jackson over Valachunas just because Jonas and Embiid don't really make sense together around the court. But, you know, if you trade Jaron Jackson over to the 76ers, him with uh, Embiid obviously makes sense, Dylan Brooks. But uh, this is one of those trades where I have, like, the Grizzlies are trying to do too much. Like, you don't want to completely, completely just mess up the chemistry you guys are in a very good place so um you know as good as i think ben simmons john randall's guys would be especially defensively um i just don't think it really makes complete sense i'm going to probably say no on this one uh and here we have uh holden walls who brings up a great point right here says to trade Jonas valachunas to the hornets or a team that could use a center and they can get a low lottery pick for him um and then move jaron jackson to the center position and then move Desmond Bain to the starting lineup, which I really do like a lot too. Uh, Jaron Jackson, like I said, man, plays the four. I think probably ideally is a center. Uh, plays a lot, I would say, probably maybe like a Miles Turner. Uh, maybe a more aggressive Miles Turner, I think, is the best way I can probably put it. But uh, yeah, that does make a lot of sense too. But at the same time, the team wants veterans, and Valachunas has relatively been pretty healthy, I believe. So. Uh, yeah, man. But uh, overall, guys, that is going to be the end of today's video. Give me your thoughts and opinions on this trade in general. And uh, let me know in the comment section below. Do you like this trade? Give me a different trade if you don't like it. What do you think would make sense to get this done? And uh, what other type of moves do you think the Memphis Grizzlies should make this NBA offseason? That's all we got. Thank you all so much for watching. Be sure to drop that like. Subscribe if you are new to the channel. And peace out, my friends.